Hey, it's Terry from D-Lab. We're getting ready to do the final repair on the Premier 110 amplifier. I'm going to gut this thing out, completely rebuild it, retest, and then hopefully she'll spring to life. So, whoa, hey! <laughs> Got a little visitor in the shop. So, hey, okay, so yeah. Grandpa, huh? alright, but I don't understand. We just did the outro. What I mean, the in, yeah, the outro. We just did the outro. What, what, what do you mean we did the outro? I'm shooting the intro to... Let yeah, people... well, we just did the outro. Oh, what was the outro? The outro was where you were, like, showing all... You were showing us that it was working just fine. <laughs> well, what, you mean you already saw the amp working? Yeah, you did too. <laughs> okay, all right. Okay. So, Emmy's calling me out, guys. Yeah, the amp's already fixed. <laughs> now, here's the deal, guys. I come home, and I got a race to fix stuff, okay? So, I can't sit down and do a fancy intro, because a lot of times, I just got to... Why gotta... not, Grandpa? I just don't have time. So what I do, I come home and I, I fix things piece by piece and I shoot little clips, right? And it gets running and just by chance you happen to be here when I had it running so you got to kind of play with it and see it worked, right? But it, everybody still wants to have an intro. They still want to know what I'm up to. But Grandpa, you said you had to still get it out and see if it worked. You already know it works. <laughs> yeah, but this is video. See, so it's like on like an old uh, shows, right? Like Star Trek. They had a phaser pistol, right? They could shoot it. Was it really a phaser pistol? No, it was a prop. So at this point, this chassis is a prop. It could be a dead amp. There could not be any, you know, new parts in it at this point, right? It's video. It's part of the presentation, right? So sometimes... I don't I have, think they agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes I have to do things out of order, right? It's kind of like how I talk to you. I can't talk to you straight. I got to kind of go around in circles, and then finally you get it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, anyway, guys. I have the amp repaired. I'm going to show you the process fixing it, and then this gal is going to test it at the end. How cool is that? You mean at the beginning? <laughs> oh, yeah, right at the beginning of the end. See, now. This is a follow up video to the Premier 110 combo amp that I picked up at the Vintage Electronic Swap Meet in Detroit. So when I initially got the unit, the filter cap was shot, I didn't even dare turn it on. So I have changed the filter cap and then I was able to get the amp to pass a signal. So it's definitely worth restoring. I also found out that there's no documentation on this model Premier amp so I have made a pretty accurate schematic. So what my plan is is I'm going to actually gut this thing out except for my new filter cap. We're going to rebuild it from scratch. So all new resistors, all new caps. So my first step will be to take some pictures of this underside so I make absolutely sure I don't miss anything. So after I get my pictures, I'm carving it out and we're rebuilding it. So one other thing I want to cover is the filament circuits. When you look over here at the tubes, you see pins 2 and 7 both have wires going to them and there's the illusion that these filaments are floating above ground. But if you follow this wire back, you'll see this one goes to the transformer and this one comes over here and it's actually connected to chassis ground. Okay, So to eliminate noise, since I'm using a grounded power cord now, I'm going to float the filament circuit with ground balancing resistors like Fender did so that we can ensure that the final product is noise free. The other thing I'm not a big fan of 
is these flying leads that go up and connect to the speaker. So maintenance wise, this is kind of a nightmare because they're always fighting you and they usually just break off the speaker terminals. So I will be adding, say, a quarter inch jack on the chassis so the speaker can plug in to ease with future maintenance of the amp. All right. So at this point, guys, it's wire cutter time. I'm just going to come in here and remove everything. I'm not concerned of where things go anymore. I just need all this out of my way so we can start rebuilding. So the next time you see this amp, all there will be in there is tube sockets waiting to be wired. All right, everything's stripped out of the Premier. I've got the tube socket terminals cleaned up, ready to put the new wiring on, which will be the filament wiring first. These are the old filament leads that went into the power transformer. The insulation was pretty hard and crusty, so I put heat shrink on it to protect it. I landed a terminal board here, and then over here, I landed another terminal board for the 120 volt AC. I didn't like the fact that they put that on the 5Y3 tube socket. So next, let's get new filament wiring in this thing. For routing of the filaments, we're going to go from the terminal board, this tube first, up to here, over there, and back. And I'll use my drill to make a nice little twisted pair. In case you're wondering, this is 20 gauge wire. There we go. Take it over to our first tube. So I've got the filament feed going to the first tube and then this is the runner that will take over to the other tube. There is some corrosion on these terminals cleaned them up best I could but what I'm going to do is apply a little bit of rosin here from Richie's radio room. He actually sent this to me in the mail for me to try. Looks like pretty nice stuff. Nice and soft. See if that helps with the corrosion on these terminals. Been a long time since I've used paste rosin. My dad used to use a ton of it when he soldered uh, slot car chassis. And sometimes I use that stuff when I do coax connectors that have seen a little bit of weather. So it's kind of interesting using it again. Okay. I'll check those under the magnifying glass, but I can already tell they look great. Alright, so I'm liking this uh, solder paste. It really did a great job on that last tube socket. Cleaned it up nicely. So I think that I will continue to use Richie's Radio Room solder paste on builds. Especially when old Snozoramus has to make a good connection to the chassis. So if you guys are looking for this stuff, it retails for about 12 bucks. You get on uh, richiesradioroom.com. Pick yourself up a container. Tell me you saw it uh, on D-Lab's YouTube. I'm sure he'll like that. I appreciate you sending me that, man. So that completes the wiring of the 6 volt AC to the tubes and to our little GE47 dial light. Next I'm going to add the 200 ohm resistors from these two filament lines to ground so we get that ground balance because remember this is different than how it was originally but it would be much better. All right, filament circuit wiring is complete, so now I'm going to start landing the resistors. We'll start with the 6SC7 tube. 
So making progress here on the Premier Amp, I have all of the resistors replaced. These are the old carbon style. I wanted to keep this thing as vintage as possible. I'm going to reuse the 250 ohm 5 watt stock resistors. There's nothing wrong with them. So this one goes to pin 8 of the 6v6s and this one is in the power supply section. Here is our feedback resistor going to the speaker lead which is now on the terminal board sharing that with a filament circuit. Next step let's get the caps installed and for that I'm going to use these Mallory style. They're the M150s. Alright there's all those new yellow Mallory's installed. Sure looks a lot better than those old wax drippers doesn't it? Really cleaned up the chassis. Everything's ready to test. So I have the Premier 110 amplifier wired as it was stock per the schematic diagram that I believe is correct. But one thing I noticed was is when I was testing it, injecting in audio from my audio generator, it does not have near the gain that a guitar input would need. Okay, this amp might have been great maybe as a PA amp or a harmonica type amp. I'm not sure what they used it for back in the day, but it's definitely lacking gain, okay? I know you collectors want them original, and it is at this point. So here is the original schematic. I'll post that for your review. If you would like a copy of the schematic, email me, and I'll send you that as a JPEG file. But if you wanted to use this amplifier for higher gain, like an electric guitar, I have came up with a modification, okay? So first, here is the items on the original schematic where I think the amp is lacking gain. So take a look at the preamp section, and then there's that questionable 470K resistor in the power supply feed. That seems odd. I would have thought that should have been somewhere around a 47K, all right? So here is a idea I have to increase the gain of this amp and make it much more usable. So take a look at this diagram. The items in red now would be the new preamp input section and that's using a 6SL7. So this amp now would have two 6SL7 tubes and you'd get the gain that you need for pretty much any type of playing with the Premier 110. You could still use it with a harmonica, but this would also allow you the gain that you need for other instruments, okay? Now, I'm not going to do this unless somebody wants this amp and they ask me to make that modification. Otherwise, I'm going to sell this thing the way it sits. I still have some work to do. The speaker needs to be connected. Things need to be cleaned up. But I just wanted to throw this option out there in case you would want it done to this amp or if you have one of these yourself here. All right, so we're doing the initial checkout of the Premier amp and it's actually a two-man job. One of us has to be stationed to look for smoke as the other one operates Variac. So Emmy will operate the Variac and I'll be over here putting myself in jeopardy. Oh, you're Fire, so sparks. Yeah. You're so hilarious. All right, bring her up. Now, we're going to watch the scope because I'm injecting a tone right now with the audio generator. Okay. And my microphonium input is up around halfway. You're going pretty s slow there, Feldman. Take it up to like 50. You said to go slow. Well, not that slow. I'm not seeing smoke. Hey, but I do see... The little dial light coming on. Good sign. Right toe? Okay. Right toe? Right toe? Okay. Is that slow enough for you? Yeah, just hold up right there, Captain. 90's good. Hold on. I want to see if we get any activity on the scope. Pa. Scope. Pa. Okay. Oh! What do you see? Whoa! Whoa! See? Isn't that great? Uh -huh. So what is that? You think that's like an inchworm? No. What, what do you call it? Is it a wiggly worm? 
Oh, you're so funny. <laughs> okay. All right. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven fountains. Right. Look here. All right. Bring that up to like a hundred, a little over a hundred. Very yeah, active, Feldman. I made one, two, three, four, five, five hills. You did. <laughs> it's kind of a hilly amp, isn't it? Yes, okay. It is. And you know what that means? What if your name was Billy, and you're doing this? What would you be? I would. I would have met my best friend Hilly. No, you'd be a hill Billy. It's so funny. Is that a go boomer comment? Oh my god. Or okay, okay boomer, right? Okay boomer? Alright, whatever. Bring it up to like 110. Oh, I just bring her up. 110 is over 100, Feldman. I know. Okay. Alright, good. Excellent. Okay, now I'm going to bring up the old microphonium level. Look at there. Scow zow. Huh? Now let me bring up the tone areno. Look at there. Man, oh man, we've got some hills going on there and some valleys, don't you think? Why are you kicking my garbage can? I don't know. You ever played kick the can? No. Do you even know what it is? Nope. That's a good one for you to look up. So, all right, we're good there, and I am on the microphone input. So, I'm going to just leave it the way it is, and let's go to the instrument input. You know... I don't know what instruments was back then, okay? Because I don't think they had electric guitar. Uh oh, was that <laughs> yeah, you? No, that was my water bottle. <sighs> oh, it just scared me. Well, you did that on purpose. <laughs> I, didn't, I wasn't touching I'm it. I'm gonna get my poppy bottle out of here and scare Grandpa. Poppy <laughs> bottle. <laughs> yeah. I didn't even do that on purpose. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I, get, I just gave you. All right, there's the right instrument now. input. So you can see that's a little bit lower. So the microphone input, I wonder if there's interaction. Yeah, there's a little bit of interaction. So I'm really not sure what they use this amp for back when it was made. They made this back when they were making wheels and fire. They made fire? Yeah. You know, like, you, you have no idea where I'm going, do you? No, I don't. It's I old and crusty, kind of like me. Gray hair, right? Wheels and fire. We'll talk about it later. Anyway, <laughs> it appears as though the Premiere is working excellent. <laughs> Thanks for your help. You can uh, use your magic hand, zoom out, and kill the video. I'm going to zoom in instead. Excellent. That's perfect.